you have a reputation for, according to what I read, for loving, for, for being fun to be with on the set, for mm. enjoying the process, for someone who, who takes it seriously but also has a great time mm. making Hijinks. movies. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's too long a day not yeah. to enjoy yourself. And you do have to, I take it very seriously, and I think that I'm a very focused person. But I think that there's always room for fun and camaraderie. And on this particular movie, which was, I, I must say, um, to no detraction from anybody else that I've ever been in the company of at work, but this was from A to Z of what you tabulate a good experience on. This was 100% on all fronts. And the most important is you're in sync with the director and with your co -actors. So in sync, but in every way. We all share Finney and Eckhart and Soderbergh and myself and the crew and all the great actors that came in to do all the other parts. We had so many terrific actors. Everybody had the same spirit of joy and the same spirit of really happy to be there and I think this was that perfect experience that makes you understand everything that's come before. Because everything that's come before, in all of its positive and in some of its frustration and everything else, has prepared you perfectly for this moment. And that's how I felt every day on this movie. I would assume you just signed this terrific deal, I guess, with Joe Roth, who mm -hmm. left Disney to <clears> form <throat> his own production company. And it's a five, whatever it is, five or six picture deal, whatever the deal is. But you can now say, I know what it is I like, mm -hmm. and I'm going to try to make that happen, mm -hmm. both in terms of choosing projects, choosing a director. Yes? Well, I've always had this strange sense of um, pickiness, even when... Pickiness? Well, you know, when I, when I didn't work for two years, um, I was 23, and even though I had um, been given a certain amount of support and had appreciated a certain amount of success, I really wanted to be so specific about the things that I did that I ended up not working for two years because nothing intrigued me in that way that I was really looking for. And so it wasn't until I did the Pelican Brief that I went back. So I've, I've even when I, you know, even when I was like talking out of the side of my head and I yeah. thought people might stop asking me yeah, to make right. their movies, um, I always had that kind of sense of, it's it's a really important moment to say you'll you'll make a movie and it has to be a, appreciated mm. and respected for that. But even though people were saying to you, maybe some of them were saying, listen, you better get back on the boards. Uh, you refused to choose something that you didn't feel perfectly mm. good about. Yeah, and I was also really fortunate because I wasn't getting um, pressure from people. People were really supporting my decision to you know and even though some scripts would come down the pike and and I wouldn't have a very high opinion and other people would have a higher opinion and I you know I was I always felt very supported in my stance when they brought you Pelican Brief mm -hmm. you suggested Denzel mm. yeah <laughs> <laughs> I did I just I, I had this epiphany um, and I was in Europe and I called Pakula and I said, I have this idea for Grey Grantham. <laughs> and, uh, he said, you know, what is it? And, and I didn't, I didn't know how he'd respond because it's, it's, you know, we were talking about a lot of really great capable actors and, you know, Denzel just came to me and, um, I said, you know, uh, Denzel Washington. And there was this long pause, and I thought, oh. And he goes, what an inspired idea. I was like, oh, okay, good. <laughs> now he's with me. So then we took it to the studio, and everybody just, I mean, it was irresistible. He's such a brilliant actor. And I was just so pleased and stunned and thrilled that he agreed to do it. You sign on with Soderbergh, you, then you get Finney, mm -hmm. and then you start to do it in April or May rather than November right. and December. And so you're on board. You, this is based on a real life person. Mm -hmm. This is based on two real life people and a real life lawsuit. Did you spend much time sort of debriefing these people at all to find out what she was like, or did you take all of your instruction from the script? Well, St um, Stephen 
and a writer called Richard Legravenate. Oh yeah, he's great. Did he's fabulous? Yeah, he's and they did a major overhaul, revamping, really just ringing all the best elements of the truth of this story out of the piece. And Soderbergh was really my liaison to um, the real Aaron Brockovich, and he interviewed her, and he would send me transcriptions and tapes and all these things to review. And I I couldn't understand it first because originally I said, you know, well when can I go? meet her and where is she and and he said well you know just hold off on that and he kept putting me off and i think <laughs> he just all that energy in one room probably would have been uh too much for anybody to bear but he was really great in feeding me information and really giving me a strong sense of her where i felt really liberated to um because you can't be someone i can't be aaron brockovich i can't look exactly like this woman what can you do? Well, I can interpret her as closely and as accurately as I can. That's what acting is about. Uh, well, it was for me, because I don't want to do an imitation of somebody. That's not, I don't do imitations. I'm not good at that. I, and I felt like there was a method to Stevens keeping us apart for so long, which he did. Um, and I think it was ultimately really smart. And when I kind of saw what he was doing, I realized how clever it really was. And I think that it really freed me to really go the distance with the information that I had. But he had told you what she's like. I mean, he'd given you oh, sense oh, that so this, was a, this was a smart, savvy, tough, yeah. oh, very uh, coming from a vulnerable place because she mm -hmm. had kids, but determined and taking no prisoners in terms of the fact that this was, you know, it's a wonderful moment in which she's talking um, to the, I've got the character that Eckhart plays, but the, the guy George. is George. And there's a moment in which she basically is saying to him when he's saying this job is all consuming. Mm -hmm. She's saying, you don't know what this means to me. Mm -hmm. right. I felt very, very well informed by yeah. Stephen. Very, I and never was And then when you lacking. met her, she came on the set. She has yeah. a little walk-on role. Uh -huh. yeah. Did, would, was she what, everything you imagined her to be? Or that Stephen had said she was? Or was she less or more of something? Well, I had seen lots of pictures of her, so I knew yeah. what she looked like Attractive woman. and beautiful. Right. And um, the day on the whole for me was um, heinous. It was terrible. <laughs> it was heinous? It was heinous. <laughs> because I was so Well, first of all, You're I knew nervous? she was coming. I was so nervous. I knew she was coming, but it was one of those days where we were shooting other things, and then we were doing this scene. And, and I had come into the makeup trailer for a tweak and she was in there and just boom she was there and i was like <laughs> all of a sudden and these I two forces even, are in the same room yeah and i wasn't even brockovich you know i had on my sweatpants and like a t-shirt and you know yeah. and uh i was like uh, you know and I, I kind of fumbled through an introduction and yeah. and whatever and then when she came to the set and she was in the scene i was so consumed with the idea of what is she thinking what it, that's, uh, thank goodness it, it's a very simple what scene. Was she thinking about seeing you, or was she thinking about seeing this portrayal of her life right all of there? It, all of it. Here I am pretending to be her. Here these people are pretending <laughs> to be her children. Yeah. We're pretending that this is her life. Like, what is she thinking? And she seemed so calm and collected that you couldn't read, you know, you couldn't read excitement. You couldn't read nervousness. She was just very cool. And I thought, oh, God. And I was, I was the antithesis of that. I was just a complete wreck. All right, the first scene we see is when George, uh, the aforementioned George, played well by Aaron Eckhart, tries to get uh, your phone number. This guy is a biker. Yeah, moves uh, in next door. And who moves in next door, and there's some little bit of he's wondering if he's bothering you, and here it is, and then he sort of moves in, period, and becomes an interesting counterpoint to you. Roll tape, Aaron Brockovich. Why don't I take you out to dinner to apologize for my rudeness? Huh? You give me your number. I mean, I already got your address. So you can't get away, huh? And I'll call you up proper and I'll ask you out and everything. You want my number. I do. I do want your number. Which number do you want, D George? George. Now, I like the way you say that, George. Uh, well, how many numbers you got? Oh, I got numbers coming out of my ears. For instance, ten. Ten? Yeah. That's how many months old my baby girl is. You got a little girl? Yeah. Yeah, sexy, huh? How about this for number six? That's how old my other daughter is. Eight is the age of my son. Two is how many times I've been married and divorced. Sixteen is the number of dollars I have in my bank account. Eight five zero three nine four three. That's my phone number. And with all the numbers I gave you, I'm guessing zero is the number of times you're going to call it. 
Hey, how the hell do you remember your bank balance right off the top of your head like that? See, that impresses me. <laughs> now, what's the best line? That impresses me? No, he says, how'd you know your bank account oh, yeah. out of your head like that? Aaron is so good in this movie, and I have to say Aaron Eckhart, because yeah. with Aaron and Aaron and right, right, all right. the Aaron different Eckhart. Aaron's, but he's so good in this movie. Now, you said you loved him. He was, the little asides in that script, that dialogue, was that stuff that he brought to it, or was it not in the script, or was in the script, or what? He always added so much to the scenes, just little... Yeah. lines here and there just would pepper it with his own little thoughts as George and it really made everything come to life so vividly. Yeah. I love performing scenes with him. I mean that was a great dialogue though. I mean that shows you I would think knowing nothing about acting that if you are in fact an actor and somebody gives you those kind of fun lines mm -hmm. it can make your job ten times. Well easier. that was always one of my favorite scenes when I come out in the yard and yeah. he's got the bike and the whole thing. It's a great two characters meeting in a yeah. movie for the first time. Setting up the whole relationship that yeah. will exist throughout the